In this video I'll be showing you how you can make this lit Firebase sign-in form using only two widgets. Okay, maybe three, but it's essentially just two. Oh, and you can also customize it in any way you want. Stick until the end and I'll show you how. Welcome everyone, in this video I will be showing you a new package that I made and uh, that is called lit Firebase off. So the lit being uh, like uh, that's lit and uh, also meaning that it is already a lit or already a light. So yeah, the idea is that it's Firebase but already burning. It is essentially just a couple of widgets that will allow you to quickly add Firebase to a Flutter application. Please note that this is still at a very early stage, so um, do expect some bugs and I am aware that a lot of features are missing. And I also have a big list of planned features that will be coming in the future. But that all said, in its current state it is actually very usable and I do think it will provide a lot of value to a lot of people. A while back I made this post asking the community on YouTube how you feel about um, me developing a package that will assist in Firebase authentication. And part of that post was also to test the waters and see if people would be willing to pay for a service like this. And in the end it was a 25 to 75 split between people that said they need this and people that said they would rather incorporate Firebase authentication on their own. And then a lot of comments or at least a couple of comments from people stating or saying their opinion and giving their feedback for the idea. In the end, after some thoughts, I decided that I still wanted to do this regardless of whether this will be paid or not. And uh, yeah, I also decided that this um, will be completely free. So this is completely open source and it has an MIT license. So feel free to use this or to abuse this in whatever way you want. The point of this video is just to show you how easy this package is to use and to basically show you the benefits that you might get from using it. But again, I uh, reiterate that this is still very new, so expect bugs. In the process of me making this video, I actually uh, updated this quite a lot just because I found issues as I was making this video. So yeah, might even find some in this video. At some point in the future, I plan on making this documentation also a lot better. I would like this to be a go-to reference for anyone that's adding Firebase to their Flutter application for the first time whether that be on um, web or mobile or desktop in the future and for them to have the necessary resources to add it without issue. In this video we will be adding it to a Flutter web application and there is no particular reason for that, that is just a, a personal preference for me at this stage. But that said, this video is just an introduction to what this is. In the future I will make dedicated tutorials for all of the different aspects of this video that will be provided in the documentation. And that also shows how to add the platform specific configuration that you need to do. But for additional information you can see there's a section called platform configuration stating what you need to do to add it for an Android app and how to add it for web. Other platforms will be added in the future. So with all of the details out of the way we can actually get started and what we will be making I actually have a, a demo, a live demo somewhere here, if I can find it, uh, live demo. We will be making uh, this, so this is essentially the standard um, screen that you will get if you use this package, except for this title. And uh, yeah, it's um, complete Firebase authentication with errors and everything, so if it's not a valid email you'll get that notification. And if you enter the incorrect password, then you will also get um, a error, so as you can see. And if you actually sign in with a legit account, so let's just sign in using um, the anonymous feature for Firebase Off, then yeah, you can see you can sign in and sign out. So yeah, very basic, but um, you will see it's quite uh, cool to do with this package. Maybe I'm a bit biased because I made it, but yeah. <laughs> One thing um, that I forgot to say, thank you to all of the people that actually ended up voting in this poll. I really appreciate your feedback. So let's get started and I've already made um, this test application in Firebase. And as I said, this won't be a complete tutorial on Firebase authentication. This is just a walkthrough on how to use this um, package. 
So in the future, I will make more dedicated videos that will be of assistance to people that have never done Firebase authentication. So essentially catering to those of you that might be stumbling on Firebase or for the very first time. But um, for now, let's take a look at the package. So here we have just a standard application, nothing special and nothing is happening at the moment. And the first thing that we will need to do is add a dependency. So in the package, let's just get the latest version. So in the installing section, we will add this dependency. And that is all that we will need to add from a dependency side for this video. Okay, so then back in our main dot file, the first thing that we need to do is we need to wrap our material app in the widget that will initialize the Firebase authentication or the lit Firebase auth package. So that is called lit auth init. And then the lit auth init has a auth providers attribute where we can basically specify what auth providers we want to enable. So by default, email and password is enabled. So we don't actually need to specify this, but just for clarity, I'm going to say that this is true. And then we will also enable anonymous sign in. Okay, so these are the two authentication providers that are enabled. And yeah, in the future, I will be expanding on this a lot more. But before I do that, I just want to make sure that the base features are working without errors and that there's actually some um, interest from the community. So basically, I'm trying to say if you find this uh, interesting or if you think that this will be a package that is useful to you, then definitely uh, please give this a like on pub. So you can see I've already hit the like button. It's only me and some other person. Whoever that person is, thank you. And if you want to be extra kind, you can also go to the repository on GitHub and give it a star. I promise that was the last interruption for this video. Back to the code. Now that we have initialized this, um, we should be able to run it and we shouldn't see an error. So I'm actually going to run this. Now we are actually going to see an error now that I think about it. Uh, I'm going to run this and show you the errors that you get so that when you use this package, you will be familiar with what the errors look like because the current error that we're going to get is not an error in the package, but the fact that we haven't provided the Firebase initialization. So the app is not uh, being initialized and not lit off, but actual Firebase authentication. So on the platform side, and you can see that we get the error that says the stream provider user. And I think if we scroll down, yeah, you can see that cannot read property app of undefined. And this is a Firebase error saying that app for Firebase isn't initialized. So if you've ever used Firebase, then this will be familiar to you. So in the case for Flutter Web, what we need to do is we need to go to the web folder index.html and here we can actually initialize Firebase. And uh, the initialization scripts we can get from Firebase itself. So I'm just going to zoom in and in the project overview, uh, one thing to note is that I've added two apps, a Android app, and again, this is just my test uh, Flutter application, and this web app. So if we go to the settings for the web app, we should see, uh, yeah, this, where it gives us the scripts that we need to insert into our index.html. So I'm just gonna uh, copy all of this, and then go to index.html, and then in the body above, where we actually uh, initialize uh, Flutter. You can see that we are importing this uh, Firebase JavaScript SDK. And then we will also need to add the auth SDK. So here's a link that takes us to all of the other um, Firebase packages or SDKs that we can add. And we want to add it from a CDN, so a content delivery network. So expand this. And you can see we have authentication. So I'm just going to copy this one and paste it below. So what this does, it gets the um, Firebase SDK and the Firebase auth SDK. And then we initialize our application. So we initialize Firebase to connect to this particular Firebase app. 
and now it should be fine let's actually stop and restart okay so it's running without a error so that is good and then no errors are a good thing and the next thing that we want to do is we want to provide the sign-in form so uh, as an example uh, this sign-in form that we saw this live demo so to do this it is literally just one widget that we need to add so in the body instead of returning this we are going to return the lit off widget and just like that we should have a sign-in form and yeah there we go so this is our new sign-in form so as an example if i enter gibberish here sign in i get um, an invalid email so let's actually sign in legit so this is an account um well let's make let's do a test now so i'm gonna say youtube at test.com and we'll say test one two three and then register and now you will note that nothing happened and the thing is uh, nothing's happening because we're not specifying that anything should happen the authentication was successful but and nothing occurred but as an example if we go to our um, application that is on the internet then now we've already registered that account so now if we sign in with that account then it should work so I'm just gonna say sign in and there we go so we've created a new account but now the question is how can we uh, redirect the user to go to a new screen or to a sign-in screen and there are two ways or I guess multiple ways that we can do that the one thing that we can do is there's an of success handler so this will get called if the authentication is successful or if registration is successful and then here as an example we could just navigate to a new screen but to keep it simple and to also demonstrate another widget from the let off package we are going to do it a bit differently so instead of navigating to a new screen i'm going to wrap this in a widget and that will be the lit off state widget and the lit off state widget basically gives you access to two attributes that signify the different states so uh, we have a parameter that's authenticated and a parameter that's unauthenticated so we want to show the lit off form or the sign in widget when we are not authenticated so unauthenticated and if we are authenticated then we want to show the um, home page or the authenticated screen so let's actually create a home widget okay so in our home widget we are just returning a text field with a raise button and I'm also going to make sure that this is centered. So let's just align this column to also be in the center. And then in the raise button, what we want is we want to create, uh, or we want this to be a sign out button. So to sign out with the lit off package, all you have to do is call context.sign out. So this sign out is an extension method on the build context and that will just call sign out. So now just to recap what is happening is we have this lit off state widget. So if we are authenticated, we will show the home screen. If we're not authenticated, then we will show the lit off sign in form. So now you can see that because of hot refresh or hot reload, we can see the sign out screen and this well done so now if we press sign out uh, it takes us back to the sign in screen and this is annoying me a little the fact that it's not centered and the fact that this says material app so let's say demo and i also want this to be centered and there we go so you might be saying that this is pretty cool but how do you customize this uh, how do you distinguish your application from the other app apps that might be using this package? And uh, yeah, to um, squash your fears, if that was a fear, you can 
override basically every single uh, theme or attribute um, when it comes to this theme or this uh, layout widget over here, except for the positions. But it is also possible to create a completely custom sign in form that will require just a little bit more effort. But um, in the end of the video, I will show you how to do that. For now, let's get it started and actually show you how you can modify these um, particular widgets to theme it to your liking. And it's very simple to do. In the lit off widget, so this form that we have, we have this off uh, config, yes. And it's called off config. And in the off config, there's a number of different parameters that we can um, give. So for example, we can give a title. And now this is just a normal widget. So now we can say my sign in form. And if this refreshes, we should see that my sign in form. So yeah, just to iterate, this is a widget. This can be whatever you want it to be. If you want it to be humongous, you can do that. If you want it to be spinning, it can do that. There is no restriction. So let's just give this a little bit of style. Okay, next up, let's modify the email uh, text field. And to do that, all we need to do is in the off config, we can just specify a input decoration for the email text form field. And uh, this is a normal input decoration that you get from Flutter. So you can modify all of these values as you would normally do for a text form field. So for now, just to keep it simple, I'm just going to give a new label text and just say my email. And that should have done an update. And there you go. Now this is uh, basically the same widget, but it has a new input decoration. And then finally, if we want to modify a button, so let's actually modify the sign in button or the anonymous sign in button. We just specify button config and we have three uh, parameters. We have a child theme data and type. So the type would be, for example, a button type and then for now, all you can choose between is flat and raised. So by default, it is set to raised. So if we set it to be flat, then it will just be a flat button. And now it's vanished because the default text is white. So let's give this, um, let's keep this as raised and give it a button theme, uh, theme data. So yeah, button theme data, I believe, yeah. And uh, again, this is from Flutter. So all of these you can play with. So let's give it a color, uh, not a color scheme. Let's give it a button color. And uh, we can specify this to be maybe pink. And then we can also give it a height of maybe 100. We can go a bit crazy. And there you go. And now for the really cool parts of this video is to show you how you can completely modify the form to be whatever you want it to be. So this is where this package uh, really shines in my opinion. So for now, we are just going to take all of this. So this authenticated state, uh, let's extract this to be a separate widget. And we'll call it standard sign in form. And then let's create a new widget. So a new stateless widget, and we will call it custom sign in form. And then get, instead of giving the standard sign in form, we're going to say custom sign in form. And just to show you how quickly we can get going. So let's uh, give a raise button on pressed. And we will say child text sign in anonymously. So please note that this is just a standard raise button, nothing special, but we can just call context that sign in anonymously. And uh, you will also see that there are a couple of other widgets. So sign in with email and pass password, sign in with Google, and uh, yeah, more will be added. 
But with this, we should have a working solution. So if we go back to our example, we should just see a button that says sign in anonymously. So if we tap this, uh, we actually get an error. Oh, and the reason we're getting an error is because I did not uh, do the one thing that's very important. And uh, that is to actually um, specify our very important lit off widget. So I'm just gonna wrap this. If you remember, uh, just as to clarify, in the standard sign form, we have this widget called lit off. So yeah, we still need that, but this one is a little bit different. Now we're going to say lit off dot custom and in the custom we have a builder uh, or a child. So in this instance, we will just specify the child. So custom sign in form. The reason that we have the builder is because in the builder, we get access to a new context and the child. And for example, now in this builder, we can actually create uh, a button so we can do the exact same thing so I'm just gonna copy paste this and in this builder let's remove this for now so in this builder we will return this raise button and it will use the context that it gets from the builder to call and sign in anonymously if we were to instead just pass the raise button to the child then this won't work because the context um, will give an error because underneath this package, the package uses provider. And if you are familiar with provider, you need to have a new context. The context can't be the same between um, the context where you basically provide the particular widget or the particular object and the context where you are trying to get um, a particular object. It might be um, a bit easier to actually show the error. So I'm just going to show you the error that you will get. So in the child, um, we will return or not return. We will give this raise button. So let's refresh this. It's okay, so a build function return null. And that is because we did not uncomment this. Okay, so now when we tap sign anonymously, it will give an error and that is a provider error. So you will see that we get this error that says could not find the correct provider sign in handler state notifier. So this um, object over here with this class is within the lit office uh, state. And the reason for that is because all of this is happening within the same context. So this is all within the same widget. Well, not widgets, same context. So that is why instead of uh, passing a child like this, we can actually uh, make use of the builder. So if we um, get a new context in the builder, then we will no longer get that particular error. So now sign in anonymously should work. And there you go. So now we can sign out. And this time uh, we are actually gonna use the child because uh, it will be a, a completely new widget because we created a new one, the custom sign in widget or custom sign in form. So this custom sign in form is the one that we created over here. Let's give ourselves a little bit more room. And this raise button is the same one we had above. So it should work exactly the same. And now we are also going to wrap this in a sign in form. And the sign in form is literally just a normal form in Flutter, except it also does some additional things to actually be notified if there's an error in the email and password text fields. So as an example, let's wrap this in a column. And then as the children, we will give the email text form field and we will give a password text form field. And then let's copy paste this button and add it over here. And this time, we will say uh, just normal sign in and we will change this call to be sign in with email and password and now if we go back to our, our application you can see we have our forms and these forms look exactly the same as what they used to look like um, but the difference is that we can put them anywhere we want to 
Uh, as an example, they don't need to be one below the other one. Sorry, I did not mean to do that. Let's just go down again. So as I was saying, they don't need to be in this particular order. They can be uh, at the bottom over here. So it can be like this as an example, and it will still work. So as an example now, if we type in YouTube at test.com and we give our password test123, sign in, it should work. And perfect, uh, we can sign out. And uh, yeah, if you want to actually create your own loading indicator, you can use another uh, call on the build context. So we're going to create a final is submitting and call context dot is submitting. And this will be uh, called or updated every time the sign in form changes. So when we are actually doing an update, so then as an example, at the bottom here, uh, let's create a visibility widget and we will say it's visible when it is submitting and we will give it a child and maybe a loading indicator. And uh, that is called a circular progress indicator. Okay, so now going back to the app, and if we just tap uh, sign in anonymously, we can see a loading indicator and yeah. And all of these widgets, so as you can see, these are just normal buttons. They can be uh, any tap handler or any gesture detector to basically just call the relevant widgets that you want to. Or not widgets, but the relevant um, authentication methods. And as for the text form field and the password form field, you can still provide a custom decoration. So if you want it to override the standard theme, you can still give your own input decoration. If I can type. And yeah, I think that is basically that. Stuff that I'm still planning, or actually something that I didn't tell you right now, is if you still enter a incorrect password, as an example, you will still see the same notification. So invalid email and password combination. In future versions, I will add the feature to actually customize this entire notification process or for you to basically uh, override it completely and give your own um, dialogues or pop-ups. There is still a lot of work to be done with this entire package, but I am very happy with the initial states of it. It took more work than I thought it would, but yeah, I'm very happy. I do hope some of you may find this useful and I would really appreciate it if you can give it a try. And if you think that this is something that you will use or if you like it, again, tap this thumbs up over here. You can take a look at the example, which should be working, except for the fact that you need to add the uh, your own Firebase uh, initialization. Or if you want, you can just take a look at the running application and maybe see if you can break the sign-in form, see if you find any errors or cases where it don't work and yeah, let me know. You can also sign in with Google if you wanted to. But yeah, that's that for this video. I look forward to uh, keeping you up to date as I plan on uh, expanding this package. And again, I really hope some of you will be able to find this useful. Feel free to leave your honest opinion or recommendations or any errors that you find with this package. And if you do find errors, uh, please make a issue on GitHub. Thanks for watching until now, and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.